Hello and welcome, my name is Mark, this is Riffle Shuffle and Roll, and you're here today to learn how to play and hear a review for Fluttering Souls. For a complete write-up of the game, including pictures and details, head over to GameRules.com. Fluttering Souls is a commercial card game for two players. Its key features and mechanisms include card drafting, set collection, and a take that action. The objective for the round is to win the white butterfly token by collecting the most points. The objective for the game is to be the first player to win three butterfly tokens. Out of the box, you get an instruction pamphlet, 21 butterfly cards, 15 layout cards, and five white butterfly tokens. There are five different types of butterflies. On each butterfly card, you have the butterfly name, a wonderful image, the set requirement and the amount of points earned for collecting that set, and down here it tells you how many butterflies there are of that type. So we see the blue Morpho requires three of that type per set and it will earn you four points. The 88 requires two cards in that set and it is worth three points. The Monarch has a few options. If you collect four Monarchs, you earn eight points, three Monarchs equals five points, and if you collect two Monarchs, you earn two points. The Swallowtail is a special card. By itself, it's worth two points, but if you collect both of them, the set can be used as a wild. So if you have both Swallowtails, you could use it to complete a set with any of these other types of butterflies. If you don't wanna use it as a wild, you can collect the points for each individual swallowtail. So it'd be two points each. Finally, here we have the great egg fly. This does not begin as part of the layout. This is a card that allows the player to essentially block potential card draws for the opponent. We'll see how that works here in a moment. To begin setup, shuffle the layout cards thoroughly, place them somewhere on the table, and flip the top layout card over. This will determine how the cards are placed for the round. From the butterfly deck, remove the gray egg fly and place it to the side. Shuffle the cards and deal out the layout. Cards that are white are face up. Cards that are black are face down. The remaining two cards are not used for the round and they can be placed aside. Make sure they are kept face down and make sure nobody knows what they are. Decide who's going to go first. The player who goes second is given the great egg fly. We're going to play that the player on the left is going first. A player begins their turn by choosing one card from the layout. Only cards that are uncovered are eligible. So at the beginning of the game, the cards at the bottom of the layout are eligible for play. This player chooses the blue Morpho. By drawing that card, they have made the Swallowtail uncovered, which makes it eligible for play. That ends their turn, and player two can now take their turn. Please notice that the Monarch is only half uncovered. It cannot be chosen, until the 88 is removed. Player two takes their turn and chooses the Swallowtail. Play like this continues until all of the cards have been chosen. When a player chooses a card that uncovers a face down card, that player ends their turn by flipping the face down card over. That card is now eligible for play. If a player chooses to use the Great Egg Fly card, they first choose a card from the layout and then immediately replace it with the Great Egg Fly. The Egg Fly card must go in the exact same spot that the card they just drew came from. Whoever collects this card from the layout next can also use it during the round. Once the final card from the layout has been drafted, it's time to tally up the score. 
A player only earns points for completed sets. The great egg fly is not worth any points. Player one only collected one monarch, so they would earn zero points. Here they have a set of 88s for three points, another set for three, a complete set of blue morphos for four points, and a single leftover 88. This does not earn the player any points. The player with the most points at the end of the round wins a white butterfly token. To set up for the next round, collect all of the cards, including the two extra cards. Don't forget those. Shuffle them up, turn the next card in the layout pile over, and the loser of the previous round gets to decide whether they want to go first or second in the next round. Shuffle, distribute the cards, and continue play. The first player to collect three white butterflies wins the game. And now for the review. Let's first start with art, design, and theme. The artwork on these cards is beautiful. The artwork on the box is beautiful. These are really good looking butterfly cards. And if you're into that aesthetic, then this game is gonna be right up your alley. Now this game uh, has been released around the same time period as Wingspan. Wingspan really set off a craze for um, very realistic nature themed games. And this definitely fits into that category. And I see what they're trying to do here, but when I talk about theme, you'll hear why it doesn't really work for me. So each card, each card has a wonderful picture like that, like something that would be out of, of a nature guide. And I think that is really neat. The layout of the card is nice, seeing as how you're not holding the cards in your hand, you don't need pips in the corners or any way of identifying the card along the side. Everything is nice and centered and you got all the information you need on the card. It tells you how many of this type are possibly available. It tells you the point value and the requirement to earn those points. Um, the layout, the graphic design is spot on. Now, as for uh, the theme, the theme of this game is completely irrelevant to gameplay. They, they, they kind of put a bow on the box by tying it in with the legend of the white butterfly, which is a, a Japanese tale of a man that was so dedicated to his wife when she passed that he tended to the graveyard that, was she, that she was in. When the man fell ill one day and could not go to see her, a white butterfly came and visited him. So the legend is that white butterflies represent um, lost loved ones. That has nothing to do with the game absolutely nothing but they kind of go out of their way to share that legend in the guidebook and the tokens are white butterflies um it's it's a nice element but it has no effect on gameplay and it doesn't even make sense with what you're doing in the game so i don't i mean i don't like that i don't care for that at all i like themes if a game needs to be th thematic then it the theme needs to matter to, with it needs to influence gameplay the theme needs to matter and it, it just doesn't here you are collecting sets of butterflies each butterfly type has its own value and the cards could have just been colored they could have just been colored cards with a point value you could have pasted on any theme here um and i don't know i mean from my perspective that's not okay i don't like that so if you're in league with how I think, then the theme, this game's not going to work for you. Now, uh, with that in mind, let's move into gameplay. So the gameplay is incredibly simple. On your turn, you draft a card. That's it. You choose from the cards that are available. Different cards become available as the game progresses. That's your only action for the most part on your turn is to draw one card it takes more time to shuffle and set up the layout than it does to play the game for the most part 
unless you've got somebody that really needs to choose between two or three cards, but you really don't need to put that much thought into it while your opponent is taking their turn. That's plenty of time for you to analyze the field, realize what's gonna become available on your turn and to make the decision. So as my wife and I played this game, each game only lasted a few minutes. Like I said, it took more time to collect everything, tally up the score, shuffle the cards, and deal out a new layout. So I don't think this game is very fun. Um, the gameplay is too simple. The great egg fly is used as a take that card. We, neither of us enjoyed that aspect. It's kind of mean in how it's played and it's really the only interesting action in the game. And all it does is frustrate your opponent. It, it, it definitely saps away from the fun. Um, I, I mean, I assume if you wanna take the time to get very good at this game, that great egg fly would be key to um, being able to win and overcome the first player. And that's another issue with the gameplay. The player who goes first has an obvious advantage. And the great egg fly, my suspicion is that was their attempt to mediate that, how the first player gets such a leg up from the get go. So in our playthroughs, first player often won. Only when we were extremely cutthroat with the great egg fly card, did the second player actually come out on top. It's just not a very fun game, in my opinion. This is not a type of game I like to play. Um, we, I, for the past year, I've focused pretty much primarily on two player games because that's what I'm able to play. My wife and I can play games and two player games or games that are designed for two players tend to be more enjoyable for us. So I've been getting a lot of exposure to those types of games. And unfortunately, this one just doesn't really cut it for us. Now, as far as value goes, this is where I have to ding this game the most. It was $13 and I picked it up on a whim. I didn't really do any prior research. I believe they did a little review for it on the Dice Tower podcast. And I don't believe they said anything more than they liked the theme. Um, I don't recall them saying much about gameplay, anything positive, but they did say how pretty the game was and how the legend was nice. And none of that matters. I'm not paying for that, I'm paying for a game. And if the game happens to play well and have a theme that's awesome and applies to the gameplay, that's even better. So $13, there are a lot of issues with this price point and what you get. It is for all intents and purposes, a micro game. You get a very small deck, 21, essentially 21 cards. The layout cards are pointless. The layout, playing through a variety of layouts did nothing to add enjoyment to the game. It just made setup even more tedious because you have to keep referencing the card, making sure you're flipping cards face down or face up. If you accidentally flip a card over and see it, what do you do? You can't just flip it down, so then you have to put it in the next available spot for a face up card, but then that messes with the distribution of the cards. That's not how the cards would have been originally distributed. And then it feels, it just doesn't feel right at that point. So the cards right out of the box were bent. They had that bend, which tells me they were a cheap, cheap card stock. As soon as I took the shrink wrap off, the entire deck flexed. And from my understanding is that's bad. That is not, that does not signify that a good quality card is being used for this game. And the bend's only gotten worse since I opened it up. The, you get these white tokens, which are nice, but they don't do anything for the gameplay. You're paying for tokens that do nothing more than act as a mini trophy for when you win the round. You don't need this. This game could literally be wrapped up, a 21 card deck, throw a rubber band around it, and then whoever wins the round, you mark it on a piece of paper, or you just keep track of it in your head because you're only playing best of five anyways. Uh, Christina and I found that we did not want to play 
five rounds, the best of five. We would play best of three and be pretty much over the game. So for, I'm a stickler on price and getting what you pay for. And what I'm finding so far in the hobby market is that more often than not, you're paying for pretty pictures rather than gameplay. And I really don't like that. Now I've got some games coming up that I think are going to change my mind a little bit, like The Crew and Tournament at Avalon and um, Royal Visit. These games are $25 and lower and you get a lot of stuff in the box. Now as far as gameplay goes, I don't know yet. Gonna have to dive in to find that part out. But when I open up Fox in the Forest and I open up a game like this, uh, Fluttering Butterflies, I'm immediately disappointed at what I'm getting for the money. What makes a what makes a hobby market game that isn't very fun but looks really good more valuable than a mass market game like Uno or Phase 10 or any of those games that most extreme hobby gamers stick their nose up at? I don't think Fox in the Forest is worth three times as much as Uno. <laughs> I don't. And I'll talk more about that in that video. But I don't think um, Five Crowns is a mass market game and it costs $9.99 normally. And during the holidays, it typically comes down to eight bucks. This game is not worth more money than Five Crowns. You'll get more game, you'll get more playtime out of Five Crowns. It's a more versatile game. It can be played with two, three, four, five players. It can be played just fine with two players. And so for value, I get it. This game gets a thumbs down for me as well. I hate to be, I don't want to be so negative. I had high hopes for this game because I love the way it looks. But if the end goal of the hobby market is to try to get more casual consumers involved in the hobby, then it is products like this that are going to keep that from happening. Because someone who walks into their local game store for the first time and sees an attractive game on the box, sees an attractive game on the wall, and then spends more money on it than they would have spent on a game at Walmart, and then they get home and open it up and are disappointed, what are the chances they're gonna go back to that store and buy another game, let alone pay for a, a game that's 50 bucks, 75 bucks, or 100, as some of them are. You're never going to get these people into the hobby if they feel like they're getting a raw deal when they get home and open up the box. So, yeah, well, that's my rant for this game. If you're into the simple gameplay and you really love the art and the theme, then maybe you should get this game. But if you're looking for a game that's gonna have longevity, that's gonna get a lot of playtime, and um, is good for two players, I would say pass on this. So for me, this is a game that I'm not gonna play, and it's probably not gonna stay in my collection. Well, all right, that's it for this particular video. That was Fluttering Butterflies. And you know, if you've got this game, you've got a different opinion, let me know down below. I'd love to hear it. Um, everybody likes different kinds of games. As you can see, I hover more on the fringe of the mass market, dipping my toes into the hobby market and just trying to sort out, you know, what's worth buying. Well, that's it for now. And until next time, keep on playing.